forward to presenting my research and also getting to know other people and what they've been researching. This is my first time conference and I really want to meet some people. Um, I'm looking forward to presenting my research and then also just meeting like-minded people who are interested in the different aspects of engineering education, making sure underrepresented groups are included and uh, represented in the education. Learning, I always leave these conferences with lots of ideas and just things going on in my mind. Welcome to ASWE TV. Welcome to ASWE TV. Welcome to ASWE TV. Welcome to ASWE TV. The American Society for Engineering Education works to strengthen the foundation that engineering is built upon through the advancement of innovation, excellence, and access at all levels of education for the engineering profession. ASWE is home to some of the greatest minds, promising students, and innovative educators. And we'll capture it all right here on ASWE TV. I'm your host, Iris Perez, and today we'll be speaking with individuals paving the way for the future of engineering education. Join us as we sit down with ASWE's Chief Academic Officer, Chief Information Officer, and the Chair of Equity and Inclusion Committee. Take a deep dive into some of the educators making a difference as we visit Texas A&M, George Mason University, Wilbur Wright College, and Clemson University. Happening right now on ASWE TV. ASWE TV is your source for everything engineering education. Be sure to catch ASWE TV on TVs at the Minneapolis Convention Center, in select hotels, and of course, you can always find us online at the ASWE website, YouTube, and Twitter. First up, let's sit down with ASWE's Chief Academic Officer, Jacqueline L. Sayed, and discuss what's new with ASWE's academic strategies and educational programs. Thank you so much for joining us, Jacqueline. First, let's start with your title and how you're involved at ASWE. Sure, I'm the Chief Academic Officer and the Managing Director for Professional Services. ASWE is made up of several sectors and the professional services houses academic services, education and career development, ECD, fellowships and research opportunities, FRO, institutional research and analytics, IRA, and P12 and DEI. So it's a lot of different areas. So what learning services are available in ECD? Let's start there and who are they for? Education and Career Development has houses also Learning Services, LS. So within Learning Services, there are different courses and webinars, um, and they can be customized. Uh, one of the most prominent are the Delta um, courses, which um, help with build leadership at all phases of a faculty career. As ASWE members are largely edu engineering educators or faculty and administrators, um, those are, are really our targeted audience. So what new specialist consulting programs have been implemented in academic services? Well, the specialist program is within um, academic services. And what it is, is our members can apply to be an ASWE specialist. And you're reviewed, you put in an application, reviewed by your peers. And then when ASWE has consulting opportunities, then we go to our database of subject, subject matter experts in order to match our members with potential opportunities. So tell me about the new student programs that have been implemented in academic services. Services. What we've been doing lately is we had focus groups and in surveys in order to reach out to our student members and we want to build infrastructure and a one-stop shop for our students. One of the things we came from the students is they wondered about scholarships and activities they can do. Well, they're right now embedded in the hundred different divisions. So we're surveying all the divisions so we can pull out and put in one place where students can look at what are the scholarships and what are the activities they can get involved in. So that's coming soon. So what's the new strategic objectives plan in ISD? The strategic objectives plan is actually the headquarters operational plan for the strategic plan. And so it runs from uh, 2020 to 2023, and it, it really mirrors the board's goals 
but then it operationalized what are the outcomes that we at headquarters are supposed to do in every instance. So there's a strong membership focus, there's a strong DEI focus, and so it, it helps organize what we're supposed to be doing in headquarters, um, and also it communicates to the board, which really has new members every year, what is it that we are doing in headquarters and how does that move forward? So that sounds like why that strategy was implemented. Yes. So what change do you hope to see with this new plan? In the DEI, we looked first at promising practices. Today, I'll be holding a session for people to help us prioritize those promising practices. And then next year, we'll be implementing those we prioritize. So it just helps us to be able to communicate out. This is the window of time for everybody to give us input. And so briefly summarize the importance and the impact of ASWE. ASWE helps us do our job better. I, I myself am a lifelong educator and started in automotive industry, but then I've been a professor and a chief academic officer. And so at every part of my career, there were ways to get involved with ASWE. There, we're a community of practice, so you can talk to somebody who's not your boss, right, and get insights and share best practices and talk through how would you do something. Thanks so much, Jacqueline. And we'll be checking back next year to see how those changes have implemented the lives of future engineers. Now let's take a look at another institute changing the way we educate our engineers as they teach students how to tackle complex societal problems. It's the Center for Adaptive Systems of Brain-Body Interactions at George Mason University. The Center for Adaptive Systems of Brain-Body Interactions, or CASB for short, was created as a transdisciplinary center for advanced study at the university. We have really brought together a broad range of uh, disciplines to work on problems that are very pressing in society and complex problems involving physical health and mental health and individuals in their environment. So at CASB, we deeply believe that some of these complex problems really requires a multidisciplinary perspective. It cannot be solved by any one discipline alone. And so our focus is to improve the quality of life of individuals and enable all individuals in society to participate meaningfully in their life roles and activities. We are working closely together with our community partners, translating the science in terms of physical health, behavioral health, and environmental factors to meaningful solutions that impact our communities. Every engineer was taught engineering. We didn't show up in the nursery solving equations and drawing diagrams. This knowledge is passed on, inherited, learned, and earned. So, who are the caretakers of this knowledge? Schools, more precisely, the instructors, leaders, and staff who work there. These people undertake the unselfish pursuit of teaching. They take everything they know and give it to others. Their students, they come from every corner of the globe bonded by one pursuit, engineering. Engineering is a curiosity, a pragmatism, a lifestyle. It lives in all of us, and it was instilled upon us by someone else. This is the beautiful cycle. Engineering is essential to society. Without it, the world as we know it wouldn't be the world as we know it. The American Society for Engineering Education is designed to advance the innovation, excellence, and access of engineering education. We're a tapestry of universities, corporations, and government agencies, all working in harmony to empower individuals and preserve the power of engineering. That way, we can safeguard the wisdom of the past and expand upon it in the future. A-S-E-E. -E. I'm now joined by Omero Murci to discuss the diversity and inclusion paper judging at this year's ASWE. Omero, thank you so much for joining us. Please explain your title and your impact here at ASWE. Yes, sure. I'm Omero Murci. I'm the incoming chair for the Commission on uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. I've been working with this commission for two years and finally last year I was nominated to be the incoming chair, which means I did one year uh, following the current chair and at this conference this year I will be assuming the position of chair. 
and leading the initiatives for next year's in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion at the National Conference. And this year, let's talk about the efforts that ASWE made to boost diversity and inclusion. Yes. yes, I mean, I think that's a huge focus for ASWE. Like, if you see our current logo is excellence through diversity. So that's a very powerful statement. That means we care about these things and we want to show people that we care. Uh, and there are multiple initiatives, right? So there are divisions that are only focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And then there is our commission that is focused on uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. What our commission does is mu we have six different committees and we do multiple things to try to boost uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion in the field. For example, we have professional development where we do workshops, um, summer series, uh, virtual stuff. People get a lot of training with these workshops and this is all volunteering work. So people really volunteer to just teach others and provide these opportunities for others. We also have um, social media posts, communication strategies. We have different committees uh, working on language that we should be sharing with other people. Um, so many multiple things that our commission does. For example, this year we focused on the, this, this was the year of impact on racial equity. Mm -hmm. where we have, and, and I know there will be some conversations about this later on, but um, we did a lot of work trying to really show the impact that diversity and inclusion can have in the field. It's so critical, especially now at this right. time where the demands yeah. are loud and clear. So can you explain the issues and the lacking of diversity yeah. and inclusion in the yeah. engineering education community? We spend a lot of time focusing on recruitment, right? We spend a lot of time creating programs to bring Latinx kids or African-American kids, and then we engage them and we make them really happy about these opportunities. Right. But the reality is that when they join the college or the universities, that stops. Mm. Um, and it's more difficult to find support systems that will continue supporting them through this path. And they feel lost. They feel like they don't belong. They feel like they are in this new space where they don't have much people that look like them, that have their same experiences. So it's really challenging for them. I think that also impacts their completion of degrees and provides more challenges to what we do. Recruitment is fantastic. We need to keep doing that. But we also need to keep thinking about the other side of things. When they are here, what can we do to make things better? Right, and make sure that they're carried through with support. Right. right. So let's talk about the DEI Paper Award. Yes. Yeah. So that is an initiative that we had in our commission. And I think it's a really great initiative because for me, when I think about that um, Best Paper Award, it's about celebrating. It's about celebrating the hard work of people that really focus the research on improving our field. And what I really like about the award is that it's nomination. So any division at ASWE can nominate papers. So it's not coming from one single side. So you can see, for example, a paper in mechanical engineering that is very technical, but it still has a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and it will be nominated. So we have a broad range of papers from multiple aspects of engineering education that have been nominated because they have a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, which I think is a strong message to say, this work can happen in any space in engineering education. It doesn't have to be in one particular aisle. It mm -hmm. can be anywhere, and we want to celebrate that. That's wonderful, and I'm so glad to hear that that impact is with a wide-angle lens. So can yeah. you tell me what can educators do to promote diversity and inclusion in their place of Yeah, profession? absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure everyone has a different answer, so I will tell the answer from my perspective. I think for me, if we want to be more inclusive, we really want to be culturally relevant. And that means we really need to value the stories of all of our students. And sometimes we try to remove those views because we want the traditional views, right? The, the dominant group views, the, the, the things that we've been doing forever. And I think we need to move away from that and start really thinking about all the other opportunities. So if I have a singer in my class or a painter, if, if I have this engineer that also has this passion for art, how am I bringing that into the classroom? How am I bringing their stories? you know, wherever they grew up, wherever country they come from, how can I use that as an asset to bring it into my classroom so they feel like, yes, what I know and my life experiences are valuable and I can bring something to engineering that will make engineering better. So I think that's what we really need to be doing, paying attention to who is in our classroom. Omero, thank you so much for your time. It really does seem that ASWE holds some of the brightest and best. Now let's go to Chicago, where we'll find Wilbur Wright College, a community college that offers a student-focused and community-oriented education, teaching their students to become whatever they want to be. Wright College Engineering Program is a transfer-focused program that provides guaranteed admission to the top-tier engineering institution in the country. We provide high quality, affordable engineering education that match that of our transfer institutions 
with diverse faculty and support staff that really are committed for student success. So our vision is that Wright College Engineering Program will be the go-to institution by all students in Chicago, whether they need remediation or they need help in math, or students who com come completely prepared because we provide quality education, affordable education that makes students debt-free when they finish engineering. The program is not only changing one person, but will also change the communities. With that, we are changing the framework, the template of how community college serves Chicago. And because of this framework, if it's replicated, it could change the entire country as well. ASW's Chief Information Officer, Jasmine Rathod, joins us virtually with exciting news on ASW's updated systems and software at this year's event. Let's find out what's new. Welcome to ASD's annual conference in Minneapolis. I'm Jasmine Rathod, Chief Information Officer at ASEE. We are so glad you could make it, and I'm excited to share with you updates on the new IT systems that were recently introduced at ASE, and more importantly, to get your feedback and perspective having interacted with them, so we can get required system improvements done before you need to use them again. I want to ensure you all that my team and everyone at ASE are fully committed to providing a much improved user experience for our members interacting with these new IT systems moving forward. We have scheduled six user feedback sessions running from 27 June to 29th June at the annual conference. Members are encouraged to participate in person at these sessions and ask questions they may have and or share valuable insights and feedback by interacting with ASE IT staff and system vendors who too are fully committed towards making software improvements and partnering with ASE. We have arranged for a moderator and technical writer to capture all your feedback and suggestions at these sessions. We'll also have laptops set up at these sessions for you to help show us what challenges you had encountered using the systems, if that's the way you would prefer. After the conference is over, we plan to consolidate all user feedback we hear at these sessions and review them with stakeholders and vendors to get software bugs fixed as soon as possible and to strategize on resolving limitations in new systems, either by introducing enhancements and or by providing better user documentation and concurrent user trainings before we roll them out again. We will ensure this entire process remains transparent, so members can be provided regular updates from ASA website about improvements being planned and timelines to get these introduced. Also, our goal with these sessions is to solicit members who could be interested in volunteering to help improve these new systems and be part of a core user group that will be involved with reviewing and approving bug fixes and enhancements before they are rolled out. We look forward to meeting you at these feedback sessions and are hoping we can together create continuous and positive changes. Thanks, Jasmine. And it's great to see that ASWE is innovating even in the experiences of its members. Now let's take a look at a group of educators dedicated to creating an inclusive, supportive, and engaging environment for their students who they hope will change the world. It's Clemson University, Glenn Department of Civil Engineering. The first blocks that you lay in an arch construction are called the Springers, and these are the two first classes that the students will take in their sophomore year. And so we've been focusing on the engagement of students in class in a project-based learning environment where they are applying all of the professional skills and teamwork approaches to problems that they'll be using in industry. The second series of courses kind of in the middle years of the program are called studio courses. And in the studio courses, we are looking at kind of moving the student from the conceptual phase of a project into more of the preliminary design phase. And the last block to form the arch is going to be the keystone. This is the culminating design experience class. And through this class, they're going to formalize themselves as professional engineers. And it's gonna give them that experience that is true to what they're going to see in the workforce.
Texas A&M's Institute for Engineering Education and Innovation connects educators, researchers, departments, and institutions, both internal and external, to build stronger communities and improve engineering education. Let's see how they've earned their reputation as an established innovator in the engineering space. One of the really exciting things the Institute for Engineering Education and Innovation does is working with our academic professional track or non-tenure track faculty to help them systematically evaluate their pedagogical innovations as well as helping them get introduced to engineering education. We have more than 700 faculty here in the College of Engineering. That includes tenure-line faculty, academic professional track faculty, which are individuals who come here with some industry experience, maybe with expertise in instruction. DEI, or inclusivity or belonging, is one of our core principles. And one of the things that we're best at, and specifically, we're best at growing at. We have been having a lot of programs that help faculty get more comfortable with doing things that improve DEI in the classroom, that improve belonging in the classroom. If I am to be able to solve global problems that we face today, I have to embody the diversity of the societies I will serve. Well, that's it for today's show, but be sure to tune back in tomorrow where we'll be hearing from students making waves in the field of engineering. We'll learn about the importance of diversity from student to professor. We'll travel to different universities, realizing the vast array of innovations in engineering education. And it's all right here on ASWE TV. ASWE TV is your source for everything engineering education. Be sure to catch ASWE TV on TVs at the Minneapolis Convention Center, in select hotels, and of course, you can always find us online at the ASWE website, YouTube, and Twitter.